Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Bobo the Vulture. Um, <laughs> I just, I just happened to hit record right as, uh, right as Bean, who I'm guessing is playing Batman Arkham Knight, just happened to say, "No shit, what's that?" Um, but we're gonna click anywhere here to begin Extreme Warfare Revenge. We're gonna continue with our normal buttons. Um, it's been a few days uh, since I played the game. Um, but yes, hopefully I remember first things first. Let's see if there's anybody interested in doing business with us. Nope. Okay. So I guess that's all right then. Um, let's view our existing sponsors. We have one month left with our contract on 24 Care Productions. Two months left with J Southgate PLC. And two months left with, I guess, Nikki Six. Yeah. Thomas Lee. We're in fine enough shape with them. Risk level is at 70%. We have no merchandising, we have no advertising. But our public image is up to 69, the sexiest amount it could possibly be. So, that's good. Let's go back. Come on, back. No, I don't want to quit. I guess it just took a little bit longer to load up that a new month had started than I was expecting. My fault, guys. Um. Sitting here trying to think of what it is that I want to do real quick. Oh, let's look at our feuds. Right now we just have the one between Felcher and General and Inakami. And uh, it's already got 82 heat, so people are digging it. I keep developing this feud. It's getting interesting. Damn right it is, Sophie. I know what I'm doing. Hopefully. I'm not forgetting something very important. Let's check my notebook. No. Let's uh let's move on to the next day here. Because why not? Bunch of people signed new staff members. WLW signed a staff member Kevin Kelly. Big Happy Records, Loeb & Co, Hilton Technologies. Let's clear all that. Great for all of you, then. What's going on in the Extreme Mail? Ace Green, apparently, out of work. Whoever Ace Green may be. He's a staff member of some sort, but I'm going to guess it's not one that we could get. And if we could, he'd be used to that sweet, sweet WWE money. We wouldn't be able to provide him anything. Because we don't really pay people. Now, I may have mentioned this in an earlier video, but apparently there are... There, I mean, you can you can go in and you can create your own wrestlers. And I know there are a few people that were wishing that I'd done that. But it really is kind of a somewhat more fussy and fidgety process than I would really want to get into. Um, for each person, maybe if it turns out there's an incredible and prolonged interest in this entire series from start to finish, maybe I'll come back and do it later and it'll be all laugh times and fun and I will go in and make a bunch of people, but, um, maybe not. Oh, NWAW risen on national, so some... Mikey Whipwreck has got a written contract now. The Blue Meanie. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so a couple of leagues have gone out of business, but um, on the other hand, some are moving up. Let's go first here. Charmel Sullivan. Dan the Man. Hey, Matt Stryker. 
He was a, uh... Matt Stryker was a school teacher, too, wasn't he? Wasn't that his whole thing? Matt Stryker, the, uh, New York... The New York English teacher. Who, uh, also decided... ROH has signed Ron Killings. What's up? Steve Carino. Uh, all I know about Steve Carino is apparently... Pretty sure there's, like, some photo of him out there completely covered in blood. And, um... Or maybe he just bladed a lot. I'm not really sure. Blading, by the way, folks, is, um... It's a term that people use. Hey, it's Alex Wright, das Wunderkind, who is probably in the year 2004, not a Wunderkind anymore, but when he first went and signed on to WCW, he was, like, 19 or something like that, and he was from Germany, and they were like, he's das Wunderkind. You know, because he's, I guess, a young guy. But, uh, yeah... Blading is, uh, is a term that gets used when people, uh, like, they literally take a blade to themselves um, and cut themselves open to give the appearance that they've been beaten up so hard that they've been bloodied. Wait, no, don't delete all the mail. I haven't looked at it yet. Jinsei Shinsaki. Johnny Cashmere. All right. <sighs> um, it's not as common these days because I guess the whole indus the industry in general, but of course the WWE in particular have taken a more like family friendly, all ages you can bring the kids approach. Um, NWA W have fallen back to cult level, so I guess. Their time and the big time was not as uh, well received as they were hoping. Demonology. Face the hangman. ECCW unholy. Oh, Jay Briscoe. Wait, did that say Eric Angle? Oh, yeah, Eric Angle. Um. Yeah, Kurt Angle, I think Eric Angle's Kurt Angle's brother, right? Yeah, um, Kurt Angle, um, an Olympic gold medalist, uh, in the 1996 Atlanta Games, and, uh, you know, the, wait a second, I knew this was going to happen one of these days. I knew this was going to happen one of these days. ROH has signed Conrad away from us. So, we can no longer use Conrad for anything. No. I know, Bean. It's terrible. Yeah, I know. Conrad was one of our... Conrad was like my number one star. Yeah, but did he get blown up? No. <laughs> he didn't get blown up. I mean, he might have, because blown up is a term that gets used in wrestling when uh, people get really winded uh, during the middle of a match. They're like, oh, this guy got blown up in the middle of his match. Um, yeah, fuck, Conrad, our number one star. I mean, I was using him because he worked cheap, and now he's working cheap for somebody else. Probably working far less cheap. Jado, Kenzo Suzuki, Prince Nana, Rick Michaels, Iceberg... I don't know who any of these people are. There you are. Let's go. Alright, I tell you what, I'm going to the roster here, and Anthony Bartlett Jr. Um, right now, we already have, we've built a relationship with him, and we've built our own stock. Um, he's not fantastic or anything, but he works for cheap. I'm going to go into contract negotiations with him and see if he will work a written contract for us for, let's say, five years. Make him a new contract offer. No thanks, I think I should move on to a bigger promotion. What if I gave you six grand? 
What if I gave you seven grand? You know what? You're not worth as much as all that. I got plenty of other guys, talented guys hanging out back here that I'd be able to use for my purposes. Anthony Bartlett Jr. will probably get hired by ROH too. I mean, if nothing else, I just took a guy who was sitting around with nothing better to do than to wrestle in a backyard league and got him a job in ROH, which is like, I actually don't know about here in this little world, but uh, I guess it's not quite the same here, but ROH is probably like the number three wrestling promotion in the country right now. You got WWE, then you got TNA, then probably is ROH is next. I might not be 100% accurate on that, but certainly if you're going by, hey, these guys have a TV show, these guys don't. That'll be part of it. So, folks, now that that's happened... And I'm not surprised. I'm a little disappointed. Um, <laughs> standing room only. I guess they're doing a little bit better than we are. Yeah, 3,517 people. They're doing a little better with their shows than we are. Um... But what can one do? <laughs> I don't know what Bean's doing over there, but it involves a lot of analog controller shaking. J.R. Ryder has agreed to an open contract. Air Paris. Huh. I don't know Air Paris from Adam in the real world, but I seem to remember Air Paris being a guy in this game with good stats that was sort of in the sort of indie wrestling tier where you could pick them up if you were being a person that was out there on the market for new talents. So, we didn't graduate up to being able to hire Air Paris in time to hire Air Paris. So that's unfortunate. You know what else is unfortunate here, folks? Let's take a look at our finances. Last time we made 22,000, but the time before that we only made 5,400. And part of the way that we were doing that, of course, is by having Conrad in most of our shows. Pretty much all of our shows. Conrad worked for $5,000 in appearance. We no longer have people that work for $5,000 in appearance, with the exception of Anthony Bartlett Jr., and Anthony Bartlett Jr. is, well, he is what he is. Um, all right, let's click over to the next day here. So let's go back. I want to see, yep, it's all right. I want to go into event history and look at, well, there you go. We had him main eventing in our last show. I guess he didn't main event in that show, but oh man, I was planning on working up an angle between Conrad and Palm Beach Boy John, maybe someday. Alright. Um, next show. So Anthony Bartlett, that's right, because we basically were doing a big thing, we were trying to set up all that stuff. So, it's time for Valentine's Massacre, everybody. And, uh... This feud between Felcher and General Anandakami is gonna keep going, and it's gonna keep going strong. And you know what I'm doing right now? Again, I'm going back to the event history. Okay, last time, Indikami got to start the show, so this time we're gonna start with an interview from Felcher. Because, I'm sorry, but these guys... They got the charisma. They got the uh, 
they got that je ne sais quoi. And it is going to be, they's going to be continuing the feud. Let's finish booking that segment. And then... Let's see, who do we have to debut? Yeah, so this is this is the big debut button. I have <laughs> we have Dunn, Lil Nate, and Trent Baker. So let's see what their deal is. Let's take a look at Dunn. He is an upper mid card tweener, apparently. That's how he views himself. Dunn. Lil Nate is a face. He's a pretty talented face. Uh, Trent Baker. Ooh, Trent Baker is good. Real good. I bet Trent Baker would be a good guy to pitch up against General and Intakame. How over is he? He's 12 over. Intakame is 44 over. There's no way that Intakame would lose to Trent Baker. So... That's unfortunate. Trent Baker also has zero charisma. Well, he has 42 charisma, which is as good as zero. Well, Nate has 59, which is better. And done. See, yeah, what I'm starting to get it down to now are people that don't have the charisma necessary to um, carry things. Let's see, El Magito is 32 over. What if we put him in a match against Trent Baker here? Or Dunn? Actually, Dunn versus El Magito would be a really good match. Don versus El Magito. Could feed Lil Nate to Anthony Bartlett. Or to, not Anthony Bartlett. Although it might not be a bad idea to have Anthony Bartlett in a match here. He's 52 over. Hmm. Little Nate versus Anthony Bartlett would also be a pretty good match. Let's book an interview here. A single worker interview with Anthony Bartlett Jr. And I know I'm just I'm the more I use him, the more likely it's going to be that he is going to, uh, hype up going to match, there we go. So yeah, we're going to have, uh, was it Little Nate? Yeah, it's going to be Little Nate versus Anthony Bartlett, and Anthony Bartlett is going to beat him, which is unfortunate, but it's basically the way that it's got to be. Unless we had, hmm, <sighs> I'm gonna have some of these, some of these less over guys start fighting each other because right now these guys are just, you know, we're starting to create this class of haves and have-nots. In terms of uh, in terms of who's got uh, real real juice with the fans. All right, so here's what we got to do. We got to Santa Kami still needs an opponent for tonight. 
Um, who would it be? I mean, we could put Felcher and Itakami into a regular match and have it be another screw job result. And they could keep going that way. Yeah, maybe I should just have them both do that. There you go. Your main event's going to be Felcher versus General and Itakami. No, that's dumb. Sorry, folks. I keep second-guessing myself. Um, here. We've got... Got Jeremy V, the mid card phase. He's 25 over. Dunn is 21 over. What if we had Dunn debut against Jeremy V? They're actually not. They're actually not bad against one another. I would say. Dunn versus Jeremy V. Yeah. Don versus Jeremy V. There we go. I'm feeling good about this. Uh, there's not going to be a title on the line because my league doesn't have titles at this point. Why bother with them? I mean, it would the belt would have been on Conrad, and he just got signed to ROH. So how dumb would I have looked? My champion just decided to leave for another league. Done cleanly. Nothing, and the purpose of this match is to debut Dunn. Everybody, check out this Dunn guy. He's pretty good. It's well done, right here on Raw. Is Dunn charismatic enough to interview? No. Pretty sure Jeremy V ain't either. Nope. So El Magito could still get a win over Felcher, couldn't he? Maybe. More likely for Jarrell Clark. But Jarrell Clark is a heel, what am I thinking? What about Felcher in a match against uh, Steve Stone? Ah, this is too much effort. I need to just put uh, Felcher in another match with Akimon for the billionth time. It's not the billionth time, but Akimon could get a win over Felcher, <gasps> and it wouldn't be something that would like shock the world. Book this match. It's one versus one. Singles. 
Felcher versus Akimon. None. The result is going to be a win for Akimon. And, uh... Akimon by DQ. Because Felcher's just PO'd, man. Felcher attacks the referee. Now, Felcher has a temper tantrum. Because he's just so... So messed up over this, uh... Over this, uh, whole thing he's got going with General Anandakame. Now then. Who is it that, uh, who do we have that uh, Endokami would allow himself to lose to? He's only 44 over, so we might have some people, aside from Akimon. I mean, El Magito, uh, but he's not great. Oh, Fast Eddie. We could maybe put him in a match with Fast Eddie. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's put Intakami in a match with Fast Eddie. Okay, so the match will be one on one. Single match. Fast Eddie versus General and Intakami. No titles on the line. Stop asking. It is going to be a win for Fast Eddie. Because... Felcher is going to run in. Yeah! Fast Eddie by interference. And the aftermath is going to be... Felcher continues his assault. What a bastard. And the purpose of this will be to continue their feud. And Anthony Bartlett Jr. versus Little Nate. It's going to be a match. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match. Single match. Anthony Bartlett Jr. versus Little Nate. There he is. Uh, no title on the line. The result will be a win for Anthony Bartlett Jr. But it is going to be a win by... Uh, Gonna be by DQ? Maybe. Or is it just gonna be by cheating? Yeah, he'll have to cheat to win. Select the aftermath. Does a little Nate get revenge? Hmm. How about they fight? They brought it back. And the purpose of this is to debut Lil Nate. Well, put Lil Nate over. That'd be nice, but uh, wouldn't make much sense considering he's losing. Okay. He's got an interview with Anthony Barton Jr. Um, so let's take a look now. We got done. Uh, Jeremy V. Uh, Lil Nate. Uh, actually, Dunn and Little Nate are both roughly as charismatic as one another, and they're both pretty uncharismatic. Oof. Oh, Akimon's here. Akimon can put together two words. 
Yeah. Let's get Akimon an interview in here. Interview. Single worker Akimon. And uh, his target is going to be Felcher. Because he's got a match with Felcher tonight. And there you go. Hype duty. He's got it. Haha, <laughs> duty. Alright, let's book uh, an interview segment here. Single worker. Let's make this El Intercamo. And he is going to be... Oh wait, he already he already had his. No, he didn't. What am I? Poof. Dun, 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 dun. Junior. Oh right, Fast Eddie is the uh, main opponent here, and Fast Eddie is not great with a mic. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, into Kame in here then with an interview segment. And his target is going to be Felcher. Um, continuing on their feud. There you go. Want to keep that thing burling over. So, really done or a little Nate. Was that right? Well done, Fast Eddie, little Nate. He's 17 over. He's 21 over. Do either of them get to win their matches? No. Well, I guess Dunn does. So let's let's let Little Nate have. Wait, did we say Little Nate? Yeah, Little Nate has barely enough charisma. We're hoping. With Lil Nate. He doesn't have a target. He's just talking about how great he is. Yep. Let's finish booking that segment. It's not going to be the best uh, the best show, probably, for all that. I'm going to start this show. <laughs> Anthony Bartlett Jr. is backstage hyping things up. That's good. Oh, excuse me. Let me get my tea. Felcher doing the same. That got a lot of response. Dunn and Jeremy V put on a solid match. Nobody really cared, though, so it got about a half rating. Akimon bringing the, uh, bringing the, the, the strong interview. Pretty good. Anthony Bartlett Jr. and Little Nate. They put together a decent match, considering... They're not the most talented guys. Anthony Bartlett Jr. is kind of rough. I mean, he's not rubbish, but uh, he's not great at anything. He's good at a couple things. Again, these are all pretty good matches. Ultra vs. Akimon gets a lot of heat, I guess, because those guys are built up so much. I've built them up. Hey, you know what, little Nate? That's not bad. That's not bad. Considering your charisma and your relative... Obscurity, putting out a 46% rating um, interview segment on your debut show, that's solid. I'll give you that, little Nate. You did a good job. Our main event here being Fast Eddie versus General N. And uh, I suppose I hadn't been scrolling down. I hadn't noticed whether or not all of these were. Vultures left General N down and bloodied in the ring after a brutal assault. That show wasn't bad. 59? I'll take that. Anthony Bartlett Jr. thinks little Nate and he don't really click. He wants to be put in a series with Akimon. The 
Belcher and Agima didn't click in their match. So I'm told. 45 people. So ABJ versus Agumon? Maybe. ABJ. The Akimon? That could be the next big feud. And then let's click the next magical next button to move us on to the next month. Oh no, I guess we still have one more day in the month, don't we? Alright, let's go to the first. Next, next. Look at how much money those guys are making from their shows. This is not fair. Except for WXW. This is a new league. World Extreme Wrestling, sure enough. The heck is World Extreme Wrestling, and when did it start? It is small, it is based in America. And its production values are 18%, so they're doing better than us in that respect. We have the same risk level. What is Off of the Wild Samoans' reputation? Off of the Wild Samoan does not have a definitive style. That's actually something I guess you can you can sort of look for here. World Wrestling Entertainment. Let's go up here. Owner Linda McMahon. Linda McMahon goes for sports entertainment rather than pure wrestling. What about extreme pro wrestling here? Rob Black. He is known to build promotions around TNA. Although I don't see a lot of ladies in his top stars there. World League Wrestling. Oh, it's run by Harley Race. Harley Race tends to hire lots of brawlers. Yeah, Harley Race has kind of a gravelly voice. I guess is the point I was getting at there. Stu Hart. He likes to build around technical wrestlers, of course. Stu Hart Dungeon. Brought some of the best technical wrestlers of all time, like Brett the Hitman Hart. Um, Ring of Honor. Rob Feinstein likes to build around technical wrestlers and Conrad. Let's go back. Next day. Let's hop into the next month here and then we will be good. Be all good in the hood, baby. And the extreme mail. Let's check our extreme mail. We got a rating for Raw. Couple of shows. New Japan has announced its roster of touring workers. Kevin Nash retired and has become a ring announcer. I bet he's talented enough at that. Sting is retired. Steve Kern is retired. Percy Pringles retired. Oh no! Percy Pringles has become a road agent. Oh yes! Um, he has been promoted to a prime time slot. Vince Russo left TNA. Dewey Cheatham and Howe have ended their sponsorship deal. Our sponsorship deal with 24 Karat Productions has now ended. Irish oh, Tree Fellers have ended their sponsorship deal with ROH. The arts is okay. Have you blunt connection, huh? Superb work. Our public image is improving every month. We're making money every month. This is great. Extreme Pro Wrestling have issued a bankruptcy warning. Oh, Anthony Bartlett Jr. turns 20, and Majik turns 24. All right. Before anything else happens, let's take a search for sponsors. Who is interested? We have a new potential sponsor here. They will pay 40000 per show. Tree Fellers, actually, there are four of us. So, not as much as Thomas Lee Limited. But still, a uh, a significant improvement. Forty thousand a month over the ten thousand we were getting. Was it ten thousand we were getting? 
Oh, from 24 care production? I can check right there, yeah. It was uh, 10,000. I can manage to keep a morality of at least 16, which would mean that I wouldn't be able to have a risk level of more than, what, 84%? I can manage to do that. Let's offer Irish Tree Fellers a minor sponsorship. They accept that deal. So this is good, because I guess at the beginning of the month... No! Shit. At the beginning of the month, we can do this sort of thing. Alright, so. Let's take a look. Jay Southgate is going to... That contract is going to expire in a month. Um, Thomas Lee is going to expire in nine months. They're giving us 50 grand a show. I'm okay with keeping them around for a little longer. Um, we have two sponsors who will be potentially going away next month. J Southgate PLC and N6 PLC. But, uh, that's all to the good. Um, let's go and take a look at our finances here. Yeah, without, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just getting a little distracted here, being as yelling fuck a guy in the bombs. <sighs> Something serious is going on over there. Um... <laughs> Gonna have a meeting here with Sophie. No, no you're fine, dear. Um, oh, Steve Austin is coming to the end of his contract with WWE. We should totally go hire Stone Cold Steve Austin. Currently, finance department. We're we're at the round the right price range for everybody, and everything that we've got. We hope this deal will be beneficial to both parties. It's the Irish tree fellow, she say. Deleting all that mail. So this is good, folks. We, um... We've grown. 69, 70, 71. Um... It's the beginning of the month, so if we were going to make any big changes to things like... Advertising... How much would that cost? It would cost 10000 a month to increase our advertising. Not sure. With the addition of $40,000 a year, we might be able to, you know, like afford that. It would help increase our public image at a greater rate than, I guess, right now we're doing 2% a show, maybe, give or take. Um, we might be able to get another point or two if we invest a little in advertising. Um, we're doing okay, though. Um, what we could do... How much would increasing our production values cost? Hmm... It wouldn't cost us much to raise them by 5%, but how much would that actually cost us per month? That's the thing that I never really do quite get here. Either way, folks, these are maybe some ponderables to ponder for another time, but for right now, this is Bobo the Vulture. This has been Let's Play Extreme Warfare Revenge. Not a great month in terms of profits there, but we've got more exciting big-money sponsors. I love it. Bye for now.